Hi, my name's Jeremy Alberton. I'm a surf photographer from Mount Maunganui. Um, today we've got this new Canon 90D to have a play with and um, we're just going to go and do what I'd normally do in a day of trying to get some surf photos and see what we can get. So for today we had great plans of like a pretty good looking swell that was hitting so we were going to go over to a local spot here that's really photogenic so everyone was in pretty high spirit for that um, but of course with surfing when we woke up in the morning the swell just hadn't really arrived at all so we had to make a quick plan B. Decided that shooting longboarding would work perfectly for this and, and even some vibe stuff just like sunrise stuff in the water. So I messaged my buddy Shinji, who's a really good longboarder, and luckily he replied back at 5 a.m. Um, and said he was keen to go on the water. So rustled up some things pretty quickly and headed down to the beach. Usually I'll try to shoot some land stuff first, so I get some stuff locked off and a couple of shots that I'm happy with before I go into the water, because anything can happen in the water, like you can end up out of position, you can just end up not getting a shot at all. On a sunrise shoot like this, I'd usually come down and look for anything interesting in the sand, like reflections or anything like that. Somewhere I can like frame a surfer up and try and shoot something cool and a little bit arty. Just play around a little bit before we maybe hop in the water or something. Yeah, just hang there, Shinji. That's perfect. Uh, just going for something to try and use the reflection in the sand here and like get a little bit of get a little bit of a vibe going. Sitting on the board was really good, Shinji. Yeah. Just trying to get, trying to play with something like down at like 1.8 or 2.2. It's, it's like often quite difficult because you've got the sun rising and you're going to blow things out in the background. So it just depends what the light's doing. If there's some really nice colours, then we'll try and keep keep some exposure in the sky. You know, it just it's kind of no really like rules or anything. You can play around with anything because at this time of the morning, like most of the lights are really beautiful. You know and it's gonna edit out and post really nice as well. Another thing I might look for is just like interesting like patterns in the sand or something that I can just get a little bit of texture with. Um, especially when you're shooting like a magazine article or something, you don't just want all action. You want a little bit of stuff you can mix up and use as design elements. Like these patterns in the sand might make a perfect like background for a page that'll almost border like an action image or something. So. I like to try to grab a little bit of that when I'm working as well. Usually I'd be down here in my wetsuit ready to run out swimming so I can just lie in the sand and get wet and do it. But one good thing about this camera is it's got like a, a live view option so we can shoot, shoot from the back of the screen here and like see what I'm doing without having to get, get down in the wet. Oh there we go, there's something there, look at that. So over here he's just getting ready to go for a surf so I can kind of like shoot something with him and with these waves in the background it can kind of give you an idea of what the waves are doing and I would want to be stopping back up here so I'm not too shallow if I want to like capture a wave in the background. But obviously we're in some really low light so we can only do what we can do. Again, I don't think at this time of the morning it matters if you're like too underexposed or overexposed because the light's so beautiful, it, like, you know, anything will work, it's going to edit up nicely. You don't have to like perfectly expose a shot, just because there's too many elements in place for that to really happen, you know. I don't really have a preference of underexposed or overexposed, it, it just depends, like often you shoot a bunch of stuff and one image might really stand out and another one may not, you know. I, if I was up close and shooting like something a bit more waist up or portrait, I'd probably like blow out the sky. But when I'm stepping back a little bit like this, I would try to shoot maybe a little underexposed just so I can grab those nice, nice details in the sky and the, whatever the light's doing with the sunrise, you know? Just go in, mate. Let's just try shooting some surfing, eh? Sweet. So I'm going to like try and shoot some slow shutter stuff right now which you, you really have to be on a tripod for. And ideally you want some sort of video head so it's a really fluid, smooth pan, like sort of a normal photo tripod that might be a bit jerky is not really gonna work that well for you because everything has to be nice and smooth movements. Because they're both natural footers, they're probably gonna be going right and I wanna pan with them just, just off to the side of the sun where there's still like less light and it's not gonna like overexpose too much. 
need to drop my ISO down as low as possible. Uh, usually around 125th or 30th of a second kind of works quite nicely. And then set, a, um, set my aperture to suit. So with this shot, I'm really trying to work the angles with the sun. I have to constantly keep moving as they paddle up and down the beach because if I use the sun too much, it's really just gonna blow out on me. Again, there's no rules with this. You can really overexpose a shot or be underexposed. Like, it's, it's just an arty type of shot, really. So there's, you know, there's no rules. Once I felt like I was happy with the stuff that I'd uh, shot on land, decided to rig a housing up. So obviously we've got this brand new 90D and uh, there's no housing equipment made for it available. So I've got a couple and usually I can doctor something up and make it fit. So we'll, we'll shove it into one of my old housings here. We'll have limited controls, but I think we can get something going and get a couple of cool photos from it. All right, so in terms of settings here, like with this old housing, it'll just reach the shutter button for me and I have one control on the top dial so I can basically put this onto TV, onto shutter priority and I'll set an ISO that keeps my aperture in a reasonable control for me and then because I can still adjust the shutter speed I can still play with some arty stuff within that like I could speed the shutter speed right up and then it's going to drop down my f-stop I can get some shallow depth of field or I can still slow it right down and then to a point where the, the f-stop will go as high as the lens will, will go for me and um, shoot some slow shutter stuff in the water as well. I mean generally with surfing you just want a standard nice sharp image nicely composed um, you kind of want to be around a thousandth of a second. Um, in the water things all move a bit faster so you, if you can get up around 1250 or even more 1600 the, the faster the better but still within getting an f-stop that's going to give you like a nice composition and a nice a nice looking image that's not too much of everything can focus you know you still want some bit of water blur and a, a bit of background blur and stuff like that so your subjects isolated I'm going to set up here for high speed continuous we'll start on a thousandth of a second ISO around 160 just because the sun is pretty it's still really bright so when I shoot into the sun I don't want the uh, f-stop to go too high uh, AI servo of course um, this combo just picks up focus really fast it's almost like it's a point and shoot you know it, when, when you're when you're shooting in the water like it, it's a lot different to being on land like you you can quite easily find yourself out of position um, and you can just totally miss a shot from that so it's really about like being aware of the conditions being aware of, of who you're taking photos of as well. Like, I tend to have a bit of a relationship with the guys that I shoot with. I know what they're gonna do on a wave. This is the first housing I ever got. It's pretty. Um, it's a pretty basic one, but I've got heaps of great images from it just from shooting on shutter priority. 50 mil lens on a crop sensor camera. I used to use the 70s a lot in this, the 71 and the 72. And um, it's such a good surf, such a good surf combo. So with a 50 mil, you're shooting flat port, and you want to be shooting dry. So you're pulling your uh, housing out of the water to let let the water beat off, and you've got a perfect dry port to shoot through. But in saying that, like you can create some flares and stuff with that as well. So if you flick some water back onto your port, and you're shooting directly into the sun, it's going to throw up a nice big beautiful flare. So often I'll do that. Like if I know I'm shooting straight into the sun I'm shooting a portrait or even like action stuff I'll like you know right before they're sort of coming I'll just be flicking water on and making sure some stuff stuck there and um it's risky like you could like completely ruin a shot you might just blur out a whole bit but it might turn out perfect and you got this beautiful big flare on there let's get we'll do one more thing that I'll talk about as well give away all my secrets another little thing that I have with my housings is usually housings come with an acrylic port 
the, the like the front elements acrylic and that's great because if if you ding it on a rock or something it's not going to smash on you but um they don't disperse water that easily acrylics like microscopically pitted it holds the water on there so i switch all of mine to glass which um, is perfectly flat and it beads the water off quicker and then i just use a little bit of rainex on there put that on let it dry off and then wipe that off again right before I go in the water and that again just helps bead the water off immediately so I can shoot dry. Another thing to take note of on the water is like when to start shooting so you need to be making sure your timing's right so that you're going to fire off at the right time you know a lot of these new bodies like this one here will shoot 10 frames a second so you can buffer out really quickly so I'm making sure my timing's on, I'm waiting until something's actually going to happen or the right moment before I start shooting. So say for instance with longboarding, I want them to be either cross-stepping or up doing a hang 5 or a hang 10. So I'm watching him through the eyepiece the whole time and waiting for him to get to that position before I start firing. Felt like we didn't shoot land for long enough in the morning because we were trying to race against the sun. So um, yeah, we came in for a bit of a break and then once the tide had come in, the, um, the waves were actually peeling a lot better. So we set up again. I started out with the 70 to 200 and put that on and moved up into the dunes um, a little bit more to try and get a little bit of a foreground element going on, which worked well. The, um, June plants look pretty cool and we got a couple of shots there and then went down into the front and put on the long lens um, to try and get like crop really tight on Shinji and maybe try some slow shutter stuff again and I think we got something sort of cool like I could have spent a lot longer I reckon like I'm pretty picky with that stuff but I'm, I'm happy with what we got in a short amount of time. I think we've yielded a lot of stuff out of like really poor surf conditions so um, I'm stoked on that but I reckon there's one more shot that we can have a go at Notice that like, there's still some hollow little shore break waves uh, on the inside there and I reckon we can put a fisheye on this body in the housing and um, try and get inside the tube so that we see out to the sun setting and see the mount outside of the tube and um, I think that will be an amazing way to finish up. I got something, I think could potentially have the shot, but um, we'll have to wait and see till we get back and check the cars. So yeah, here's hoping. I hope you guys enjoyed the little film and I hope you learned something or picked up a few tips along the way. Um, really enjoyed using the camera today, so if you want to learn anything more about it, just uh, hit the link below. Cheers.